This is gonna be my last video for 2022. And for those of you who celebrate Christmas, I hope you had a great Christmas. And for those of you who don't, happy holidays. There was one CD player, one streamer, and one DAC this year that I really liked. Now I could do a separate award for each one of those, but I just didn't feel that I auditioned enough components in those respective categories to give those awards a real sense of meaning. Next year might be different, let's see what happens. So this year, I'm just gonna give one award for the best digital component of 2022. Now, I'll share with you at the end of this video my rationale for the eventual winner. But for now, let me just give you a breakdown of three excellent components, each of which I'd be very happy to own myself. For £1,650 in the UK, you can purchase Primez CD15 Prisma, a sturdily built slim CD player incorporating their Prisma network platform. Also available in titanium, the CD15 Prisma takes the streaming board from Primez standalone NP5 unit that retails for £475 in its own right. The minimalist controls on the front face here smacks of the finest elegant Scandinavian design. Audiophile purists may turn their nose up at the slot loaded CD player, but it has a smooth loading operation. You'll need the remote to access menu functions such as fixed versus variable volume control, adjust the auto dim interval and the time for the unit to go into standby. The remote control is a decent size, well laid out and can be used to control other primary devices. To stream music, you'll need to download the Google Home app to configure your player, which you connect to your network either via Ethernet or Wi-Fi. Then download the Prisma app to access internet radio, music stored on USB drives and the usual streaming services, Spotify, Tidal, Cobuzz, etc. The displayed menus are pretty basic, but get the job done. You don't have to rely on the app as the Prisma device will support other streaming protocols such as Google Chromecast, AirPlay 2, Spotify Connect and Rune as well. The CD15 Prisma has one set of analog RCA outputs as well as optical and coaxial digital outputs to connect to an external DAC. The USB port is for accessing stored music and the RS-232 port for system control no digital outputs, so you can't use this device as a standalone DAC to connect to other digital sources, which is a shame. This is a fabulous sounding CD player and streamer. And if it was down to sound quality alone, it not only clearly be an outstanding product, it'd probably be my front runner for digital component of the year as well. I think it's fairly easy to forgive Primair for developing a relatively basic app. It's a small company and it certainly doesn't have the software engineering might of the likes of Blue Sound or Hi-Fi Rose for that matter that I recently reviewed one of their products that has a large Korean tech giant as a parent company. Besides, you don't have to rely on the app if you're streaming via Spotify Connect, Google Chromecast, AirPlay 2 or Rune. However, inside the CD15 Prisma is a wonderfully implemented DAC section. It has the kind of clarity and refinement that I expect from a very good thousand pound standalone chip based DAC. You know, the type that are built around either an AKM or an ESS DAC chip. But most of those have a relatively flat sound stage and harmonically, they just sound a little bit thin. Not the CD15 Prisma. It has wonderful sound stage width and depth and a harmonic richness that gives it a very natural type of presentation. In fact, in this regard, it's only marginally behind the Denifruits Pontus II, which in its own right is a standalone 2000 pound DAC. And that's my gripe. The CD15 Prisma has such a good internal DAC that it's a shame that you can't use it as a DAC. Connecting external optical, coax, and USB sources would allow so many people to upgrade the performance of their other digital components. It's not like Primair don't do a digital preamp. That's exactly what you get in their 1450 pound SC15 Prisma network player which I'm pretty certain has the same DAC section as the CD15 Prisma. In this particular case, I don't think you need separate boxes. It'd be great if Primair did a version of the CD15 Prisma that accepted external digital sources. Even if it costs 500, 
600 pounds extra, what a potentially incredible front end digital solution that could be. The Aurelic Aries G1.1 is a streaming transport retailing for £2,499 in the UK. That means that it's purely a streaming source with no DAC section inside. Some people will struggle to get their head around what you get for your money when you can buy a streamer with a built-in DAC for less than £500. What you get is thick aluminium platework to construct a chassis that's unusually robust even at this price which will help to dampen vibrations from reaching sensitive electronics. There's a four inch high resolution screen to display menus and cover art that's likely to be absent from any 500 pound streamer. However, it's the inside that really counts. Trickle down from the Aries G2 is Aurelix Tesla G2 streaming platform. It's 50% faster with twice the processing power of the Tesla G1 platform found in its predecessor. Just removing the DAC section has sonic benefits that I explain in my full review linked in the description of this video. But the Aries G1.1 has dual power supplies right down to the two green transformers that you can see. One looks after the processing circuit, LCD display and storage devices and the other for sensitive audio components such as the Femto clocks and USB audio output. Both power supplies are galvanically isolated from each other to eliminate EMI interference between them. The Aries G1.1 deploys Aurelix's second generation of active USB. USB is a type of asynchronous connection that helps to reduce jitter. Jitter is a type of digital distortion that I won't get into now. But there can be a problem with USB connections and that is the transfer of EMI noise. And that's because the power lines in the USB connection run alongside the data lines. Aurelix's active USB system bypasses the USB power stream, drawing power from its linear power supply instead. Okay, a little interlude here. As I've been reflecting on this year, something came to light. Hi-fi snobbery can cloud our judgment, whether it's judging or criticizing others for inexpensive gear or expensive gear, snobbery or inverted snobbery, it's all the same. I think it's important that we reflect on our biases, we all have them. And if we can address this, we can not only learn from each other's experiences, but remain cohesive as a community as well. Right, with that out the way, onto the Aurelic Aries G1.1. This is an excellent sounding streaming transport. If your system already has great clarity, soundstage width, depth, and that harmonic richness that I'm talking about, you need to be checking this out especially if you're streaming from one of those sub 500 pound boxes with a built-in DAC. The extra clarity, focus, and three dimensionality that it brought to my system over my Aurelic Aries Mini with an upgraded linear power supply was very impressive. The Denefrips Venus 2 is an R2R ladder DAC that sits right in the middle of the Denefrips range retailing for £3,100 in the UK. Well, it did up to recently until they upgraded to their 12th anniversary models. This DAC weighs 12.5 kilograms or 27.6 pounds. That will put many amplifiers to shame and gives you some idea of the battleship build quality of the Venus 2. I had its junior sibling, the Pontus 2, here for over a year, so I was able to make detailed comparisons between the two DACs. They may look similar on the outside, but there are many significant differences on the inside. The Venus 2 shares a similar architecture to the original Terminator DAC. At the time of its launch, the Termi, as it's affectionately known by some, was Denefrip's flagship DAC. Some of the enhancements the Venus 2 has over the Pontus 2 are improvements in the power supply, shielding, temperature compensating crystal oscillators, as opposed to just good quality voltage control devices. The other thing that the Venus 2 has is almost twice the number of resistor ladders compared to the Pontus 2. This allows Denefrips to sum the output, take an average to lower distortion. Connectivity is comprehensive. This is a fully balanced DAC with XLR and single-ended RCA outputs. There are two coaxial digital inputs two balanced AES-EBU inputs, as well as an optical USB 
and an I squared S input. Those internal upgrades show up in the Sonic performance. Switching between the two Denifrip stacks was very similar to when I upgraded my Aurelic Aries Mini for the Aries G1.1 streaming transport. That's in my top reference system, which is my Exposure 21 preamp and 18 Super Mono blocks feeding my Product Response 1 SC speakers. Perhaps the difference is a little bit more obvious between the two DACs than the two streamers, but there wasn't much in it. The Venus 2 has greater clarity than the Pontus 2. Yes, the transients are a little bit sharper and the decays fall into a darker background, but it's those micro details, such as the reverb in the middle of a note, that are a lot more obvious. And it's similar when it comes to sound staging. It's a little bit wider and a little bit deeper with the Venus 2, but everything is a lot more solidly locked down. And when it comes to listening to vocals and instruments, the Venus 2 imparts a much greater sense of tangibility to everything in my reference setup. Will everybody be able to hear the difference between these two DACs? No, the rest of the system has to have that resolving power and the ability to produce that three dimensionality. And you have to know what to listen out for. But once you've heard it, I don't think there's any going back. And that's why I wound up acquiring the Venus 2 for my own system. It's not straightforward to pick a winner here. Three different components that compete in three different market segments. A superb sounding CD player with a built-in streamer, a streaming transport, that's capable of taking many high-end systems to the next level, and an R2R ladder DAC that's just as capable. In the end, I had to pick one winner, and I went for the component that I felt most people would benefit from if they made the financial outlay, assuming they were putting it in a price-appropriate system that was suitably revealing. I'm delighted to say that the Denifrips Venus 2 is my digital component of 2022. Okay, so I've told you mine. You tell me yours. What's your favorite digital component of 2022? The ones that you've heard and the ones that you'd like to hear. I'd love to hear about that in the comment section. And if you want more information about any of these products, check that out in the description of this video. There's links to my full reviews there. All that remains for me to say is if you like this video, you like what I'm doing with this channel, you haven't done so already, please do all that social media stuff. Check me out on Patreon for consultancy services, bonus behind the scenes videos. Join the ABA club on Patreon where we have periodic video calls. But for today, for now, a British audiophile signing off.